थोड़ा वेट कर लेते हैं सर लेट अस वेट अब पूछ लो ईसीआर को अलाउ किया है सर और टॉक ओके okay, सर किसी को बोलिए ना हमारे यहाँ से कोई ज्वाइन करके देखे हो रहे क्या ओके तो पीसीआर देख रहे हैं अटेंडेंस में यस सर महेंद्र दिख रहे हैं तनुश्री दिख रहे हैं अनिल है मणिकंदन जी हैं क्या करें हम लोग स्टार्ट करें स्टार्ट करते सर अभी छह अटेंडीज हैं इंक्लूडिंग पीसीआर अनिल मणिकंदन महेंद्र नितिन एंड तनुश्री Should we wait for five more minutes? So then, you are the only one left for now. Yes.
okay good afternoon good morning uh, friends uh, uh, this is a um, regarding uh, uh, saksham program and uh, for biofuel uh, we are conducting this seminar uh, today uh, i will request my all other friends who have joined uh, they, they can share their links uh, with uh, concerned uh, official who are interested in biofuel like cbg ethanol they should share with their friends so then uh, they can join uh, within next 5 to 10 minutes and uh, take the benefit uh, of the program so, uh, so i welcome you all uh, to this uh, saksham program which is uh, today for cbg uh, bioethanol uh, then uh, biodiesel so uh, with me my uh, esteemed uh, uh, friends mr uh, uh, ranjan is there mukesh ranjan who will take uh, uh, CVG session. Uh, Mr. Sachin Swami, he will uh, speak about uh, uh, 2G ethanol. And uh, Mr. PC Gupta, uh, he will uh, take the session for biodiesel and UCO. So, welcome you all to this Saksham program, uh, which is uh, meant to propagate the biofuel in the country. As we all know, that uh, biofuel is a major source of energy, uh, energy basket. and uh, 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 government has uh, aggressively uh, pushing the use of biofuel uh, to reduce the import dependency uh, of fossil fuel in country. And it is very important in the context that uh, uh, all other source of energy uh, uh, are getting exhausted and this is an untapped area. Uh, biofuel is an untapped area, particularly CBG, particularly ethanol also with the latest technology, 2G uh, ethanol, and um, uh, in, uh, government has mandated 20% uh, blending of ethanol in petrol. So this is untapped area and high potential area. Uh, again, uh, biodiesel uh, through ECO, used cooking oil, and through other uh, means are um, uh, growing area. Uh, many technologies are coming. And uh, uh, we, we can substitute a major quantity of uh, uh, fossil fuel uh, with this biodiesel and biofuel uh, uh, energy. So this is um, a growing area and uh, uh, various program on uh, biofuel. Bi government has uh, come up with the uh, biofuel uh, policy uh, in 2018 and uh, facilitated many, many, many of the uh, works uh, in biofuel. So my all friends will take session each uh, on each uh, chapter. Like Mr. Ranjan will take on CPG. What are the developments in CPG? How Satat uh, is going to be benefited? Again, Mr. Uh, Sachin Swami he will uh, take session on 2G ethanol. What works uh, at, uh, has been done by Indian Oil in 2G ethanol? What are the prospective? Uh, how? What are the challenges? So all these things. Uh, what are the uh, feeder stock used for to produce uh, uh, 2G ethanol? Uh, again, Mr. P.C. Gupta will take session on uh, biodiesel. So let us hear from them. And uh, uh, after that, the, the completion of the program, there will be question answer uh, session. Uh, I will request all my other friends to share the link uh, with uh, with uh, their colleague uh, who who are interested uh, to know about the biofuels, various uh, form of biofuel. So they can they can share the links uh, immediately and uh, ask their friends to join in this session. So that they can get benefit out of it. So I will I invite Mr. Bukesh Ranjan first of all to take a session uh, through their uh, through his presentation on CBG. Yeah, Mr. Bukesh Ranjan. Uh, thank you, sir, for briefing about the all biofuels. Uh, I will be covering the uh, CBG through my uh, small presentation. So just uh, a moment, I will share the. So it is a revolution towards the energy transportation, uh, transformation and conservation. So first of all, I congratulate uh, the efforts made by PCRA for this Sanrakshan Chhamta Mahotsav, that is Satcham 2022. So uh, we will be discussing about the CBG. Before that, I would like to cover uh, about the energy uh, scenario of our country. Uh, if you see, uh, India is the third, third largest uh, consume, primary energy consumers after China and USA, also fastest growing energy consumers, and with the growing population, urbanization, 
uh, we need a uh, affordable energy. So if you see the primary energy basket, which is uh, dominated by the coal and oil, around 85% of our the primary energy requirements. And if you see the share of renewable, it is just uh, in, in the increasing trend. And uh, if you discuss uh, about the share of gas, just it is 6.3%. And the government of India, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas is making all efforts uh, that aims to increase the gas share from 6.3% to 15% by uh, in the energy basket by 2030. Uh, so this is a, a brief about in uh, the energy basket. Next is the energy future of India. If you see the demand growth, supply chains, security of supply, sustainability, you will find that uh, this is the future of the energy. Uh, if we discuss about the primary energy mix of India, uh, the, you will see that uh, still we are dominated by coal, oil, then gas, this is the percentage. And a survey shows that after uh, two zero around matlab, next uh, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, oil and gas component will be predominant in the primary energy mix. Share of renewable energies may grow from 2% to 30% in a, a span of 10, 10 years, 20 years. And coal will decline, decline significantly because we are focusing on the renewables and other gas sources. But one uh, important thing is that uh, after using coal uh, oil, is that global mean temperature is uh, rising by the emission of the CO2. So this is a graph which shows that uh, uh, carbon dioxide emission is uh, increasing. Sorry, Mukesh, you can full screen. Kar okay, sir. Uh, recently, last year, our Prime, Honorable Prime Minister uh, attended a meeting in UN and uh, by uh, the meeting was uh, attended by a uh, conference of parties and it was 26th at a glass glow and the prime minister uh, make some commitments that is the panchamrit by this enhanced uh, by this he has targeted to enhance the non fossil fuels energy capacity by 500 gigawatt by 2030 uh, meet the or also aims to increase the energy requirements by uh, renewable by 50%, reduce the total uh, carbon emissions by 2003, 1 billion ton, reduce against uh, the carbon intensity and uh, achieve just a fifth one to achieve net zero emission by the Now, if we discuss about the our uh, uh, gas consumption in our countries, the graph shows that 50%, uh, more than 50%, we are importing from other countries in the form of LNG, and 40, around 45%, we have the domestic production. If we see the uh, uh, sector-wise consumptions, it is uh, consumed in the various sectors like power, petrochemicals, refinery, and again in CGD sector that con constitutes uh, roughly 19%. But in the coming years, as the PNGRB has uh, uh, announced uh, various uh, cities for, the, for laying, building, and operating the CGD networks. So India will uh, cover around 400 districts. 400 districts will be covered by the CGD. And uh, for the domestic and the transportation purpose, the pipeline will be laid. It will cover around 50% of our uh, uh, geographical areas of the, our countries for the 70% populations. Again, PNGRV projection is that uh, natural gas demand will uh, increase by 2026, 27 
in the power sectors the million metric ton per annum requirement for the power sector fertilizer sectors city gas distributions industrial will be uh, like 182 mmpta mmtpa so uh, coming to the challenges how we, we can uh, increase our shares of the gas so government of india i will cover later a satat scheme was launched under this uh, a scheme government is uh, uh, motivating the private interveners to set up their uh, compressed biogas plants so compressed biogas uh, is nothing but uh, any organic waste material or agriculture waste that contains carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur a process called anaerobic digestion by which uh, methane can be produced again some impurities will be there by by we can purify it and compress it and pure uh, methane or methane rich uh, in uh, more than 90 percent or 94 percent 95 percent that can be used as a uh, fuel so various feed stocks can be used to produce uh, the methane gas like uh, agriculture residue which we call parali cattle dung gobar press mud it is the byproduct of the uh, sugarcane industries municipal solid waste sewage water these feed stock after some pre treatments which we will discuss later on it can be put in the anaerobic digester and biogas which is rich in methane will be generated which can be purified and can be compressed and can be transported for the different purpose like domestic uh, customers for the domestic customers industrial customers for transportation in the CNG, in the mode of cng vehicle commercial customer also and the residue which we call digesters it is a very good quality bio manure it can be used in our agriculture land which will increase the fertility of the soil so uh, as per the is uh, code our uh, gas component and other uh, components are in this ratio it is very similar to uh, cng which we are using in our day to day uh, vehicle day to day purposes like for the domestic also for the transportations as the percentage of methane is uh, slightly better than uh, than cng so we can call it as a premium cng uh, next uh, we will be discussing about the satat schemes uh, satat is the sustainable alternatives towards affordable transportations the scheme was launched by government of india ministry of petroleum and natural gas on 1st october october 2018 under this scheme, uh, government is planning to just uh, motivate for setting up the around 5,000 CBG plants, as uh, that will cater the uh, 15 MMT of CBG. And as a byproduct, we will also get the 50 mm ton of biomanure. Mukesh, you have screen, screen nahi padha ra. Ye, uh, uh, screen ko thoda sa, uh... Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, the plants will be saved up by the private entrepreneurs and takeoff will be taken by the oil OMCs like Indian Oil, BPCL, HPCL, GAIL, or IGA. Uh, for this, uh, around uh, 3000 plus LYs has been issued to various entrepreneurs, and the expected CVG production is around 6.9 metric ton. So about this scheme, uh, already covered. Okay. Okay. 
जस्ट तो सो आई विल शो द ऑल स्लाइड्स फ्यू विच हैज बीन मिस्ड क्विकली सो दीज आर दीड स्टॉक्स next uh, this is the is code for the cng as well as for the cx cbg and the satir satat schemes so uh, government is uh, maine screen share karwa diya wo uh, government is uh, through the various entrepreneurs planning to set up around 5000 cbg plants that will cater the 15 mmt of cbg and as a by product we will get 50 mmt of biomanures the plant will be set up by the entrepreneurs and the Offtake will be taken by the uh, different OMCs like Indian Wild, BPCL, HPCL. So for this, uh, various LOIs had been issued around three one nine two. That will expect the CBG production of six point nine mm metric tons. And uh, next is the. Uh, now we will discuss the benefits of the compressed biogas production. Uh, so uh, this will uh, definitely reduce the import of natural gas. as uh, we are importing the lng from different countries uh, next uh, it will create uh, the swachh bharat because the gas is clean green and also it will take care of the burning of the paddy straw in the particularly in the ncr zone and also we are using a uh, uh, press mud so it will also give some environment effect good environment effect uh next challenge is the because if any entrepreneurs want to set up the uh, cbg plants uh, they will require a fund for setting up the plants so under this scheme uh, uh, priority sector lending has been uh, announced by the reserve bank of india and our various nationalized banks are financing for these projects Canara Bank is the nodal uh, nodal banker for this uh, uh, promoting this uh, schemes like uh, State Bank of India, Punjab National Bank, and other banks. Uh, recently, uh, this uh, the which we were discussing about the manure that has been taken care by the uh, Agriculture Ministry and uh, it has been included in the fermented organic manures under the FCO one nine eight five. it has been notified by the government next uh, is the uh, one plus thing is that if we set up this uh, plant in a very remote areas and if there is a uh, cgd network passing through the uh, plants or nearby the plants it can be injected into the cgd system also instead of uh transporting to the retail outlets it can be injected in the cgd networks various plants across our countries has been set up one is at the namakkal that is in tamil nadu uh some are in uh, maharashtra some are in haryana like uh, rohtak is uh, has one plant and uh, some are in up like india potas limited these are the photos of the ek recently uh, commissioned plant at sangrur which is in uh, punjab districts the plant is using uh, the paddy straw around 300 tpd tons per day which will produce around uh, 33 tpd cbg we are selling it through our retail outlets also so these are the photographs now what is the potential of cbg in our country we will discuss so before that i will take that uh, what is the potential of uh, any feed stock that can produce 1 ton of cbg like uh, agriculture studio if you are using 10 ton 1 ton of cbg can be produced from press mud 25 tons 1 ton of cbg can be produced a spent wash like that bagasse municipal solid waste cattle dance chicken litters forest residue one is the napier grass napier grass has also the same potential which we have from the agriculture residue 
and also the from the sewage waste so it can be set up in the cities it can be set up in the rural areas so uh, from the survey it has been observed that there is a potential of 18 mmt from the cattle dung and chicken litter eight from the forest agriculture 12 mmt like press mud 8 mmt municipal solid waste 2 mmt so total potential uh, is around 60 mmt in our country uh this is this is the uh, where uh, the potential is a uh, highest in our like a uh, state wise like maharashtra madhya pradesh uttar pradesh these have the uh, potential uh, greater than other states so cbg the sustainability angle say if you see economic social and environment it is a very good i will not got uh, go in details it also covers the our uh, atmanirbhar bharat mission of our uh, country make in india and social in every plant there is a employment of 25 and direct and, and other indirect employment is also 20 like uh, uh, for the transportation and distribution now the next is the how it can be produced so various technologies are available in the market depending on the your uh, location and uh, availability of the feed stock and water it can be selected so there are some technologies uh, for the digester one is cstr continuously stirred tank reactors uh, pft power plug flow technology Uh, we have also our technology that has been developed by the research r and d group i will not go to uh, get into details uh, it can be stored in the balloon and then it can uh, after purification it can be transported uh, one thing is that uh, during the production some other components like hydrogen sulfide is also generated that can be removed through the these or any of these uh, technologies like biological iron chloride water scrubbing some technology had some benefits some negative uh, like uh, capital expansion capital expensive also and for the removal of the carbon dioxide various technologies are also available समर जाए कि पी एस ए प्रेसर स्विंग एब्सन वाटर स्क्रबिंग केमिकल स्क्रबिंग मेम्बर स्क्रेशन दीज आर यूज फॉर द रिमूवल ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फ्रॉम द गैस फ्रॉम द गैस मिक्सचर नाउ इज द वट इज द इकोनॉमिक्स ऑफ द प्लांट सो फॉर सेटिंग ए प्लांट ऑफ हंड्रेड टीपीडी सीबीजी आउटपुट विल बी अराउंड टेन टू ट्वेल्व टीपीडी solid material around 35 to 40 tpd project cost will be around 40 to 50 crores irr is 13% which may vary depending on the uh, cost of the gas and payback period is also 4 to 5 to 6 years for the press mud also uh, the output will be lesser and the cost will also lesser for the cow dung uh, still uh, output will be lesser and the solid manure is the just in three times cost will also lesser so these are the list of the some plants associated with indian oil like iot uh, set up by the indian oil iot biogas it is a feed of stock is the chicken litter capacity is 15 tpd one uh, plant is at uh, rajasthan hingonia place and one big plant is going to be set up at the gorakhpur that has a capacity of uh, 200 plus tpd and uh, 25 to 28 tpd will be produced these are the some uh, snapshots of uh, hingonia that is in uh, jaipur it is in rajasthan cbg marketing we are doing through our retail outlets 
दिस इज आवर लोगो इफ एनी वेयर यू सी द इंडो ग्रीन दैट इज दैट कंप्रेस्ड बाय गैस इट इज फ्रॉम द इंडियन वाइल रिटेल आउटलेट्स इन any retail outlets uh, dbs we call it dbs daughter booster booster station uh, cbg stations uh, there are some components uh, like compressors and cascades this is the current status of the uh, schemes satat schemes uh, around uh, we are selling through our 23 cbg plants through our 35 to 38 retail outlets industrial customers are also there ccd injection which we discussed can it can be directly injected into the ccd network instead of uh, uh, selling through the retail outlets one thing i will request everyone that if you need uh, more informations or if you forget uh, from this sessions you can just visit the satat.co.in you will find various informations there biomanure which is a very good bio product of this uh, plants it can it is a organic manure and it also increases the uh, uh, yield production of the agriculture land this is uh, regarding the fertilizer consumption in our countries if we can add some uh, instead of using the fertilizer if you use organic manure we will get the different uh, good quality of uh, crop and also more quantity of crop uh, this this is the justification for promoting our the organic manure because uh, like uh, we are if you are using the proper ratio of npk the yield quantity will increase and uh, by this manure we are getting uh, good quality of yield and also if we discuss about the uh, soil the carbon percentage varies from uh, place to place like in haryana uttar pradesh the carbon percentage is more and uh, if you see the west bengal madhya pradesh carbon percentage are very so depending on the soil this fertilizer can be used uh, in that uh, agriculture land we also know everybody knows the problems uh, rising due to the chemical fertilizer use so we should or we should shift towards the organic manure gradually this is regarding the natural farming organic farming uh, this is uh, the f fermented organic manure that has been included in the fco fertilizer control order 1985 this with this specification we can use it as a very good manure uh, already gadget notification has been done these are the some benefits so before wasting uh, more time i will uh, go for the question answer sir these are the some brands iot gas for the organic menus thank you to bengali thank you thank you mukesh thank you sir uh, sorry for the interruption koi baat nahi it was good lovely presentation so i will request uh, um, all the attendees uh, if they ask any question they have any query or question uh, should be uh, uh, discuss it after the session or by all the three or uh, 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 we should ask the question on cvg uh, here itself because session has just completed so if any uh, question is to be asked or any query is uh, raised i will uh, like to go into that and uh, discuss that, those queries otherwise we can uh, move ahead uh, if uh, all agree uh, with the next session 
and after end of the session we can uh, take the queries uh, for all the all the session uh, so as you wish uh, attendees uh, i don't know uh, if anybody is question answer no question has been raised till now so uh, nobody has raised hand also so i will request mr sachin uh, to um, uh, go ahead with the next session uh, with their his presentation on 2g ethanol and uh, yeah mr sachin mr sachin swami yeah thank you sir uh... Is it visible? My presentation visible too? No, no, no. Just. Either you send me, I will. Uh, no question has uh, raised, so we can go ahead with the uh, next session. Any problem, Sachin? Yeah, and since it's a problem to share. Yeah, now now. It's... Send me, send me your uh, this thing. Ah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Okay. Make it full screen. Yeah, yeah. First class. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning uh, to all of you and a warm welcome in today's presentation on 2G ethanol uh, that is being organized under the aegis of uh, Saksham campaign of uh, PCRA as well as MOPNG, which aim to convince cus uh, consumer to switch to cleaner fuel and bring the behavior change to use uh, fossil fuel uh, religiously. Uh, I am Sachin Swami. I am Chief Manager, Alternate Energy at Indian Oil Corporation. And uh, today I'm like, like to give presentation on second generation ethanol. I think there is some issue. I just reconnect. I am not able to change the slide. Yeah, give screen, me screen share कर लीजिए share the screen और tab से देखिए tab से होता है change तो just just me I will टैब से चेंज करिए टैब से कीबोर्ड से कीबोर्ड का टैब से नो सर इट्स नॉट देखो फुल स्क्रीन से हटा के ऐसे ही करो हां ऐसे फुल स्क्रीन से हटा दो ठीक है मिस्टर बासु हैज गॉन टू हेल्प यू आउट आप तब तक जारी रखिए बताना जारी रखिए इन द मीन टाइम मिस्टर बासु विल हेल्प यू आउट डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्री फुटप्रिंट major government incentive and policies and what are the benefit and the challenges so i just start with the <coughs> topic is what is biofuels there are so many definitions available 
uh, or the web also but in the context specific manner but to restrict myself in the indian context there is a uh, clear cut definition uh, under national policy on biofuel which is produce uh, biofuels produced from renewable bio sources waste such as biomass municipal solid waste uh, waste gases etc and uh, this fuel can be replaced or blend with the petrol diesel and other fossil fuels for transportation stationary and portable engine and other applications so uh, coming to the next point why we need biofuels as we know uh, we are fastest growing economy in the world and we are uh, import dependent country there is a increase in the demand of uh, fossil fuel which ultimately increase in the greenhouse emission so there is a imperative for renewable energy like biofuels the key driver for biofuels uses are economic environmental and social and uh, some of the uh, key points and uh, <clears throat> the topics are already covered in this slide but i will cover in later part of uh, the section when we cover the 2g ethanol specific uh, key drivers so again come to the categorization of biofuel again there are so many definitions so many uh, types described by various technology providers various uh, industry player and i am restricted myself again to the indian context uh, and as per national policy on biofuel which was uh, announced in 2018 there are only two type of biofuels you may not find the exact definition in the uh, biofuel policy itself but uh, for the ease of the audience i am just describing in a very simplest way the basic biofuels and the advanced biofuel basic biofuels the biofuels which are produced through the traditionally used uh, feed stocks uh, for instance ethanol it is uh, molasses the one of the by product of sugar industry and all type of other fuels which um, feed stock which are include after 2018 and they uh, covered under the category of advanced biofuels uh, including this 2g ethanol so understand about the ethanol the definition is uh, ethanol is uh, the chemical formula c2h5oh and it is a biofuels if we produce from the bio source and it can be mixed with the motor speed that is petrol the policy framework available for blending perspective of uh, ethanol in indian scenario it was started in 2002 when uh, first time ethanol blending program was announced it is ethanol blended program and 5% uh, blending was uh, targeted uh, across nine uh, states and four union territories which now it is uh, uh, for the all over india uh, pan india basis then uh, the second milestone uh, in the policy framework it was in 2009 when we first announced our Uh, national policy and biofuels although it was uh, again changed in the 2000 it is the milestone to increase the uh, ethanol per uh, percentage on pan india basis and target which was earlier was 5% it was now uh, <clears throat> increase up to 20% by 2030 and there is one more development now uh, omcs this oil marketing company can sell e20 ethanol branded petrol effect from 1st april of 2023 what we have achieved so far in on front of uh, ethanol blending i just would like to give the what is ethanol blending how we are um, doing it in india omcs oil marketing company as i told you having a common industry basis ey or you can say the tender which is uh, covered all the lo mc locations and there are administrative price as well as the declared price for the ethanol so that uh, all the players can apply for this uh, annual tenders and this esy is ethanol supply year we start from december to november so far we have achieved 5% blending in uh, 2019 to 20 and it is now it is the last year we are close to 10% it is 9.7% and you can see the ethanol pricing after this 2008 policy national policy on biofuel there was a change in the feed stock or you can easily see there are six type of ethanol category first three one which is uh, mainly belongs to the sugar industry that is c heavy molasses b heavy molasses and direct sugar or sugar syrup this is the called as the administrative price which you can easily see from 1920 to 2020 there is a gradual increase in the thing it is announced by the mopng ministry of petroleum and natural gas other three category this was downward from damaged fruit grain surplus rice and the maize the prices for this procurement price on which date uh, omcs are likely to 
procure this thing from the all the uh, industry players that is decided by the uh, omc committee and that uh, has been delegated by the national biofuel coordination committee which was constituted under the national policy uh, <clears throat> 2018 now come to the next point the the e20 requirement that i told you uh, our now our target is to achieve e20 uh, ethanol blending on pan india basis the demand projection which is already uh, announced in uh, ethanol roundabout 2025 uh, the total requirement is around you can see 1000 crore liters how we are we achieve, achieving this has to be achieved in the two uh, way first is uh, promotion of dedicated ethanol pram through long term ethanol supply ey which is already in the market which has already first round of the same has already closed and uh, other one is the effort to be made by the public sector undertakings so cumulatively we are hopeful we can achieve this uh, 1000 crore liters benchmark by 2025 here here is the road map from 2022 to 202425 and after this uh, there is a need for advanced biofuels why advanced biofuel because there is a limitation on the side of sugar industry as well as the other side of uh, feed stock like grain and all so here comes the advanced biofuel comes in the picture as well as the 2g ethanol so there is lot of confusion about the various type of definition available in the ethanol first generation second generation third generation and there are some more 1.5 2.5 3.5 and fourth generation also so basically these all are categorized based on the feed stock used to produce ethanol first generation which is uh, mainly from the sugar and the starch you can say the food the uh, material which are part of our food chain and you can easily see these are the sugar cane and the starch based material sugar sorghum and all uh, and the second generation if the we are feed stock is related to the cellulose uh, um, feed stock you can easily say the crop residue some uh, in some countries this is called as also as lignocellulosic ethanol or cellulosic ethanol as well and the third generation there is again some confusion third generation in india we are calling th- industries of gases if used as a feed stock that is third generation but in the some countries algal fuel also considered as a third generation so so many definition for the ease of audience uh, i am just categorized into three broader category based on the feed stock source now come to the our main topic that is second generation ethanol first part is very important part is the feed stock the definition is very clear ligno cellulosic agriculture residue i will covered what is a part of ligno and what is cellulose the major feed stock uh, uh, which are available in india that is crop surplus quantity is uh, uh, trifac has done a pan india basis survey and after connecting this they have work out with the four major crop identified which are where we can find the surplus biomass is available in the country the top one is the rice uh, you can say the paddy stock if considering the crop uh, side sugar cane wheat and cotton the total quantity uh, out of total production of 600 around 600 to 700 million metric ton of uh, biomass the surplus quantity is around 178 billion metric ton as per the trifac survey and the total production to convert this whole material into uh, second generation ethanol that is around 50 million liters now comes to the next slide what are the technologies available for second generation ethanol broadly there are so many routes but for ease of the audience i have just categorized in the two broad category one first route is biochemical route and the second route is thermochemical route these steps are already uh, <coughs> furnished in the uh, slide you can easily see two three steps and i am just focusing on considering the global plant footprint the first route that is bio uh, chemical route is has some upper hand in terms of uh, widely used high selectivity and conversion efficiency so my uh, technology part will be mainly focus on this bio chemical route only that route uh, mainly <coughs> cover the enzymatic hydrolysis as uh, now i can focus on the what is biomass what is lignocellulose biomass to so any type of biomass has primarily have three major component first is cellulose second is hemicellulose third one is lignin and you can easily see in the uh, table uh, furnished in the there are various type of and various type of 
uh, specification with respect to these contained are there. The cellulose and hemicellulose, these, the cellulose is um, homopolymer of glucose and the hemicellulose is heteropolymer of the polymer. And lignin is the heteropolymer of uh, <coughs> heteropolymer hydroxy, right, alcohol monomers. Among these three elements, only two, cellulose and hemicellulose is mainly used to produce ethanol and nigglase is not converted uh, or you can say the participate in the ethanol production, but it is also a good source of energy uh, in the current uh, schemes of uh, in various projects, which are already in uh, <clears throat> uh, pipeline in the Indian context, are using this lignin also uh, some source of energy for their boiler to generate its steam. Now come to the process side. Uh, as I know, told you, uh, many technology providers are there, many steps are uh, there, but to broadly cover, there are on five process, which cover from material handling, pre-treatment, enzymatic hydroxyl, fermentation, distillation, and dehydration. I just like to give some uh, uh, light on each step. First one is the material handling, where biomass comes from the field and it is chopped into uh, the small pieces so that uh, this cellulose, semi-cellulose <coughs> part can be uh, exposed. And the, again, due to some uh, external material, next step is washing through this uh, step, foreign material get removed from that particle. Then the to ease the hydrolysis process, there is a pre-treatment, different type of technology using acidic, base, uh, steam, and other type of pre-treatment. It's depend on the totally from the specific technology, then the hydrolysis process. It is more, more or less common for all type of technology. Uh, this property enzyme is being used for this hydrolysis process. This process is mainly used to break down this cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin structure so that simple sugars can be converted. In the co-fermentation process, this uh, cellulose and hemicellulose converted into single form of sugar, the C5, C6 sugar, that is xylose and glucone. After this, this uh, solution <clears throat> uh, comes to the purification side, distillation and deration is, is very common process in 1G ethanol also. And we can get the possible uh, product from this uh, process is ethanol, biogas, some sort of CO2, furfural, acidic acid, etc. based on the technology you are using. And uh, the, what is the different uh, technology in, in terms of technology from 1G ethanol is 2G ethanol is 2G ethanol is, is a technology which is covering two industries. First part, material handling is almost similar to the pulp and paper industry. And second part is uh, almost similar to the distillery industry. So somehow it is slightly complicated than the first generation uh, ethanol production technology. And possible uh, byproduct from these uh, are also depend on the technology you are using. The type of uh, byproducts may be lignin, ash, mud, biological sludge, biocoal, etc. And a specification at the end, whether it is first generation, third generation, or third, uh, second generation ethanol has to be uh, fulfilled this uh, ethanol specification that is uh, IS 15564201004. Uh, uh, sorry, I cannot uh, go for this specification because uh, going for this full screen uh, may not be able to uh, run uh, to the next slide. <clears throat> Then the very important part of this second generation of biomass supply chain. Broadly, it can be divided into two major activity. First is aggregation of crop residue during the harvesting period, store it in a decentralized manner in the biomass depot. And the second step is the uh, logistic management from day-to-day -day supply of this feedstock from this decentralized location to the biorefinery. There is a video available. I am trying to start this thing. Uh, okay. Now I am able to this. Sorry uh, for inconvenience. It is just three minutes video. I think hope uh, audience will like it. Not coming. Uh, okay. Not able to uh, see.
वीडियो वीडियो नहीं आ रहा है आप ऐसा करो okay. वीडियो को स्किप कर जा तो ओके सर सो नाउ कम टू द डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्री फुटप्रिंट एज आई नो दिस इज वेरी ने टेक्नोलॉजी देर इज नो कमर्शियल सेलोजिक एथेनॉल प्लांट सेकेंड जनरेशन एथेनॉल प्लांट मोर देन टेन टन पर डे इन इंडिया एज ऑफ नाउ हाउ वर दे आर फ्यू डेमो स्केल पायलट स्केल एंड लैब स्केल प्रोजेक्ट आर दियर प्रॉडली देर आर सो मेनी लिस्ट इज देयर बट द मेजर प्रोजेक्ट विच आर Uh, available through the web sources the first one is the dbt ict department of biotechnology and uh, in an uh, institute of uh, chemical technology mumbai they have their uh, demo plant at kashipur up capacity is 10 ton of biomass processing process is again enzymatic hydrolysis and they have established this plant in 2016 another one is parad industries pune they have their demo plant at uh, pune itself and the capacity is 12 ton per day of biomass processing uh, technology is again isometric hydrolysis and it was established in 2017 our in house isu r&d also has one uh, pilot scale project with, that is capacity is 2.5 ton per day again the biomass processing capacity i am talking about technology is again same isometric hydrolysis and it was established in 2013 the important part of this uh, 2g ethanol project as i told you the and proprietary enzyme so indian efforts are also being uh, considered in this arena in enol r&d hpc r&d and few other players like uh, rich core and all uh, they are also going to produce uh, enzymatic higher enzyme production which is very crucial part of this um, 2g ethanol production uh, now next to move on to the what are the efforts made to for commercialization of this technology mainly it is focus on the all marketing company omcs the project conceptualized in 2015 16 when uh, committee of secretary has uh, advise all the omcs to go for this 2g ethanol technique on pan india basis with few pilot plants so that industry can be 2019 itself indian has at in such a is first plant at panipat capacity is 100 klpd similarly uh, 185 klpd plant uh, was incepted in 2000 itself by nlal in rumaligarh assam in 2020 same capacity 100 klpd plant was incepted uh, by bpcl in odisha hpcl in 2016 in bhatinda punjab mrl is also uh, shortly incepting this project in 2020 uh, that is devnagri karnataka and they have different technology these all technologies are enzymatic hydrolysis but they are going for the second route they are using this uh, gas fermentation technology <clears throat> cumulatively uh, it is uh, envisaged that 16 crore liters per liter uh, this at 2g ethanol per annum will be available through these initiatives and with the estimated investment of 7000 crores what are the incentive and government schemes available for particularly to this 2g ethanol is uh, project is divided can be divided into two terms vjs scheme and the differential pricing the first one is the vjv scheme viability gap funding a major initiative has been taken by mopng in this regard they have notified a specific scheme for this particular project that is called pm jeevan yojana the jeevan idhan vetan anukul fasal jeevan nirman yojana launched by government of india it was in 2019 the scheme was uh, announced to support 12 commercial and 10 demo projects for commercial plan the vjf amount is limited to 150 crore for each plant and for demo it is 15 crore max for each plant the total financial outlay for whole scheme is around 2000 crore and the period they have considered uh, is 2018 19 to 034 uh, and uh, cst uh, that is center for high technology mopng is a nodal agency to uh, distribute this vgf they are calling their uh, rfs uh, request for proposal uh, i think one uh, proposal is already closed all omcs project the five projects are already uh, clear um, uh, <clears throat> approved this uh, vgf fund and next round of vgf scheme is already in the market and the second most important thing is cabinet committee of affairs that is cca chaired by our honorable pm in november 2000 allow a milestone uh, uh, policy initiative in 2g ethanol areas they allow all pscs the public sector and enterprises to decide the 2g ethanol plot 
because it is a nascent technology cost of production of these all initiatives i just would like to give some these all projects capacity is almost same but the capex opex are very different so, so there is no standard 2g ethanol price for two uh, as of now for to 2g ethanol so this uh, omc's committee will decide in the due course as of now there is no price but committee is uh, working on it and maybe in another two or three months there will be a separate differential pricing for 2g ethanol as well now comes to the benefit of particular the 2g ethanol price it's all three arena of sustainable development that is society economic and environment particular to the environment as you all know the air pollution challenges every winter um, considering the ncr reason we are witnessing air quality is, is plugging to severe to hazardous category pollution uh, as a uh, some reported figure are there there are some premature deaths also due to uh, caused by the pollution and in the toxic air economic cost in terms of gdp is 1.4% it is also reported figure and the major reason uh, not i cannot say the major reason the one of the triggering reason is the stubble burning in the farm and we can easily witness in this ncr region punjab haryana and up other benefits uh, these are covered under the socio economic the micro economic benefit as if you are producing dog using domestic feed stock or may producing the ethanol which can be mixed with the petrol ultimately we are um, lowering our crude oil import that uh, resulted into forex spending and it is estimated that our of uh, by virtue of these four five plants of omcs 2 lakh rural mandates can on pan and embassies can be generated in the rural economy <clears throat> the second is why uh, i'm talking about the rural economy it will uh, the biomass supply chain which uh, we have covered although i am not able to uh, showcase that particular video uh, it is like uh, considering this feed stock it is estimated that through this plant over 2 million uh, indian rupees will be circulated in the rural economy and the gain fuel utilization can be ensured for around 10 lakh tons of crop residue burning and ultimately it is envisaged that this 10 lakh ton uh, crop residue burning will be stopped on the field there are various uh, challenges also considering this is a very new technology limited enzyme providers is there which is uh, amounting uh, increasing their um, <coughs> operating cost technology prices is limited so technology optimization is also very uh, key concern there are some by product uh, such as legrain and ash in their valorization and disposal is one of the key concern for these plants uh, i'm sure the, over the period this will be sorted out very easily capital incentives is one of the major criteria why private player are not entering into Uh, this uh, second generation ethanol uh, industry and maybe over the period this will cost will be drop down and overall these all are uh, affecting to the uh, higher cost of the second generation ethanol as compared to first generation ethanol and biomass supply chain i am already told is one of the criteria also uh, which is uh, uh, can be considered as a one of the challenge and now uh, forum that's all for my side and forum is open for the question answer uh, thank you sachin thank you uh, so thank you very much for such a nice presentation so i i don't think uh, anybody is uh, putting up any question either in chat box or uh, question answer so uh, we can take question answer at the end of the session uh, in the meantime uh, i will request uh, my uh, uh, friend mr pc gupta uh, to take session on biodiesel so over to you mr pc gupta yeah thank you thank you sir thank you very much and uh, good afternoon all of all the participant joined through the vcs uh, i am trying to share my presentation is it visible to all of all of you yeah yeah very much visible visible okay so uh, good afternoon again all of you so today i am going to uh, give you in brief about the biodiesel blending program in india and what 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 is omc initiatives to actually to pro, uh, to carry forward this program in, in india so 
uh, again, this is the uh, introductory kind of slide in which we, I am trying to explain what is biodiesel and what kind of feed stocks is used for producing biodiesels. Basically, the biodiesel is an alternative fuel which is used in diesel engine in the blended form currently. And it is dried from the plants and animal fats, which consisting long chain of fatty acid esters. So anything which is produced from the long chain fatty acid ester is called biodiesel. There are some feed stocks across the world which, for, from which we can produce biodiesel, vegetable oil, with mainly soya, rapeseed, uh, mustard, etc. Uh, palm strain oil, it is a byproduct from the vegetable oil refinery. Uh, once you uh, refine the crop, uh, crude palm oil, CPO, you will get PSO as a byproduct, that is palm strain. Uh, with the help of this palm strain, you can produce biodiesels. Acid oil, it is again the byproduct of the vegetable oil refinery. One, uh, uh, during the uh, refining process of the uh, refining and cleaning process of the vegetable oil, this acid oil produced, which can be used for production of biodiesels. Animal tallow, it is a byproduct from a slaughterhouse. Uh, and used cooking oil, uh, it is generated from the restaurant, hotels, and uh, also from the households. Tree born oil seeds, uh, 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 India is uh, producing around uh, four, to, uh, 4 to 5 lakh tons of, uh, India has the potential to produce around 4 to 5 lakh tons of. Uh, biodiesel from tree brown oil seed, which, will, uh, which I will uh, discuss in detail in later on uh, during the presentations, and any other feed stock which is having fats and oil will be used for production of biodiesel. So this is a very uh, small uh, schematic uh, representations how we can produce uh, biodiesel. So it is a very simple process uh, called transclassification process. Uh, vegetable oil, animal fats, any waste oil or waste fats can be esterified to produce crude biodiesels and it is further refined into the biodiesel as per the specification. During this process, uh, glycerin is also uh, produced, which is an important byproduct for the chemical and other industries. So 100 kg of vegetable oils and 10 kg of methanol is used, which can produce around 10 kg of glycerin and 100, 100 kg of biodiesels. You can you recover methanol from this process. Uh, next, uh, I think it is not moving. Yet. So this is uh, a snapshot of, uh, of what is the worldwide uh, biodiesel productions uh, in the uh, across the world. Uh, Malaysia is leading, Indonesia is leading around producing around 790 crore liters of biodiesel per annum, whereas India is producing around 20 to 30 crore liter of biodiesel uh, per annum. Uh, this is the major feed stock country-wise, uh, which is used for production of uh, biodiesel. Indonesia and Malaysia are using coconut and palm oil, whereas Italy, Germany, Finland, and UK using uracid oil. Canada is using canola oil. Brazil and USA using soya oil. In India, we are basically using imported palm strain, yuko, acid oil, and animal tallow. So uh, world over, actually, the edible oil are used for producing biodiesel. But in India, to avoid the dispute, food versus fuel, food, uh, fuel versus food, we are actually using the byproduct of the uh, vegetable oil industries and uh, other sources to for biodiesel productions. So this is uh, the slide which is showing that how USA is actually supporting their industry. Actually, in uh, USA, the, uh, the price of biodiesel is around uh, 1.8 times higher than the uh, 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 diesel. It is around one uh, rupees 116 per liter, where, whereas the biodiesel price is around 64 uh, rupees per liter. There are a lot of tax benefits are also there supported by blending mandate and financial assistance program you can see from the slide slide that uh, there is a tax uh, incentive of uh, 0.1 dollar on agri, agri uh, biodiesels and uh, uh, financial assistance for the uh, for the 
biodiesel units up to 250 million dollars per annum. So uh, this is uh, the step shops of uh, European Union. They are uh, using uh, uh, basically rapid oil for production of biodiesel, around 38% biodiesel produced in the EU, EU from the rapid oil, 21% is from the UCO, 20% from the uh, soybean oil and animal fats, 8, 6 to 5% sunflower oil and other, and other feed stocks. So basically across the world, except India, they are using some vegetable oils, uh, but in India, we are using waste stream from the vegetable oil refining industry. So uh, biodiesel uh, industry scenario, what is Indian scenario? So we have started uh, our biodiesel biofuel mission in 2003-2002, where, wherein we have decided that uh, we have targeted that 20% biodiesel blending by 2011 and 12. Again, in 2006, we have uh, come, come up with a biodiesel purchase policy and fixed price around 25 rupees per liter for supplying to the OMC. In 2009, India has come up with first bio, bio, biofuel policy, which is actually published by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy in 2009, in, in which we have targeted 20% biodiesel blending by the year 2020-2017. So, uh, however, uh, all these efforts uh, could not uh, come into the uh, impact, could not impact the biodiesel uh, lift, uh, uplift, 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 uplift for the OMCs. We have we have blended first drop of biodiesel in the year of 2015 on 10th August 2015. Uh, so since 2003 to 2015, we have taken this much of year to actually start actual blending at the locations. So again, in 2018, government, uh, the government of India decided that the policy should be shifted from the MNRE to MOPNG and the policy shift has happened and MOPNG again come up with the new biofuel policy 2018, wherein 5% blending target of biodiesel is set by uh, uh, to be achieved by 2030. So uh, in this policy, uh, there are some modification. Uh, where, uh, in earlier policy in 2009, the roadmap is actually missing. How we achieve this 20% uh, target is missing, but in 2018 policy, Government has also provided the roadmap to achieve the blending target by 2030. So uh, again, uh, in 2018, the policy is uh, uh, identified the various feed stocks uh, for the biodiesel uh, blending program, which, which can be used for biodiesel blending programs uh, and other enabling, enabling mechanism also suggested in the policy. And 2019, 18-19, FSSI launched a RUCO program for which, under which we can see the uh, in uh, coming slides how RUCO pro uh, program is uh, try to develop an ecosystem for uh, for collection of used cooking oil for production of biodiesels. So uh, in 2019, again, government issued the guideline for sale of 100% bio, uh, biodiesel through retail outlets, and in 2021. Uh, the government reduced the GST from 12% to 15% on biodiesel. So this is the same slide. Uh, same slide. Uh, uh, I've already told that uh, OMC started biodiesel blending in 2015, and currently we are blending uh, at 7%. Uh, that, that is called B7 HSD. Uh, B, B7 uh, blended HSD. It is conforms to IS 14607. 2017. Currently, all the vehicles which are present uh, in, the, in the market are 7% uh, material compliance and uh, com compliance, and uh, we required around uh, uh, around 900 crore liters biodiesel to 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 achieve 5% blending by 2030. Because it is suggest it is uh, uh, the uh, HSD cell projected in the year to, uh, 2030 is around. 17,000 crore liter. 
so uh, this is about uh, the uh, uh, biodiesel industry in, uh, industry in india uh, currently there are 50 msme are there and uh, out of them five are the large unit currently operating in india the total uh, capacity is around 1.25 million metric ton that is around 150 crore liter but currently because of issue of the feed stock availability all the plants are uh, running at 10% around 10% capacities uh, and uh, around 80% biodiesel, uh, biodiesel produced in india it is uh, based on imported palm strain which is uh, um, basically imported from indonesia and malaysia uh, and uh, we have omcs are also developed blending facility at uh, at 50 local location across india so we are receiving biodiesel, uh, biodiesel at 50 locations across india from here you can see that so uh, this is uh, the year wise uh, uh, biodiesel production uh, in india uh, we have pr uh, uh, produced around 36 crore liter in 2019 uh, and uh, omcr procured around 10.56 crore liter in that year but after covid the situation is uh, become a little difficult and we are able to produce uh, procure only 0.55 crore liters in uh, last year and india can able to produce only 8.49 crore liters during covid period so uh, what is omc initiative for procurement of biodiesel so we have uh, omc are procuring uh, biodiesel from two routes one is it is basically basically based on the source from which biodiesel is producing one is the non uco means uh, non uco means uh, the biodiesel produced from acid oil animal tallow or the palm strain or other sources like tree bark oils uh, we are pro uh, procuring this uh, biodiesel through separate ey uh, with the expression of interest for impairment impairment of vendors are period periodically actually publishing by the omcs and uh, uh, to impanel the uh, vendor for supply of biodiesel at designated terminals separate quantity bids for the impaneled vendors are also publishing uh, uh, to to the vendors fixed basic price is uh, basic price is declared in the quantity bids in addition to the uh, basic price gst and uh, gst and transportation is also paid additionally this is uh, one of the important document to uh, to apply in this uh, non uco ui is the cto consent to operate which is which has to be uh, which has to be submitted along with the bid for impanelment of uh, 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 for supply of bio, non uco biodiesel to the omcs at designated terminal so uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, year wise uh, procurement of omcs uh, we have started in 2015 16 and procured around 119 crore 1.19 crore liter of biodiesel and we have achieved around 10.55 crore liter in 2019-20, but again, it, there is a dip in a COVID year. So uh, uh, this is about the UCO, UCO uh, used cooking oil. So India, India is consuming around 23 million metric tons of vegetable oil. Uh, and the food safety and the standard authority of India actually uh, uh, directed the uh, all the food business operator to dispose of any oil which having more than 20% TPC, that is total polar compound. So based on that uh, uh, notification, it is expected and it is calculated that India has a potential to generate around 3 million tons of used cooking oil, which can be utilized easily from the for biodiesel productions and it can it can be used immediately uh, for biodiesel production and it can cut our it can cut our need up to 1% of biodiesel production for to achieve 5% blending uh, by 2030 but <clears throat> there are some hurdles in uh, collection of uco and its conversion in bio, biodiesel because uco is very uh, uh, unorganized market there is a lack of suitable supply chain mechanism at ground level and UCO collected, whatever the UCO collected is actually diverted into the uh, 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 secondary food chain, which is uh, sold to uh, dhabas and uh, other 
uh, street vendors. Uh, so there is a need, a stringent norms and public awareness for collections and conversion of this available eco into biodiesel. Here you can see that there are uh, there there are there is a uh, potential to uh, actually collect around 200 crore liters of eco. Uh, but the currently UCO is uh, diverting into the different stream. Uh, around 133 crore liters is diverted into the secondary food chain. Soap and oil, oleo came industry is also collecting around 33 crore, uh, 33 crore liters. Miscellaneous, that is including biodiesel uh, industry, is collecting around 23 crore liters <coughs> of biodiesel. So, to develop an enabling ecosystem, SSCI launched a, a RUCO initiative under, uh, under which uh, uh, FSSA tries to develop an ecosystem which can collect, which can collect the UCO and that can, uh, and convert into the UCO oil so that the diversion of UCO can be stopped from uh, entering into the food chain. Uh, so under FSSI, the, uh, the implementation of RUCO initiative through three uh, triple E strategy that is education, enforcement, and ecosystem. Uh, one is small film, film is, is there from on Rico. I'm trying to play it. वीडियो वीडियो नहीं आ रहा मिस्टर गुप्ता तो आप वीडियो को छोड़ दीजिए आगे बढ़िए वीडियो छोड़ दीजिए ओके सर So again, uh, National Biofuel Policy 2018 identified UCO as a very potential uh, domestic raw material for production of biodiesel, and it is a low-hanging food if uh, uh, proper supply chain is uh, established at ground level. So we can collect this uh, 20 to uh, 200 crore liter of biodiesel and immediately convert it into the biodiesel and supply to the OMC for the blending purpose. So to promote use cooking oil-based uh, biodiesel OMC. Join hands with FSSI and develop an ecosystem to promote safe disposal of UCO uh, and its conversion into the biodiesel. So, expression of interest uh, are uh, period periodically released by the OMC for procurement of biodiesel produced from the UCO, and we are giving a 10 year offtake guarantee uh, under this initiative and uh, a fixed pricing mechanism uh, for the entrepreneur who participate in this uh, initiative. So under this initiative, as on date, total 21 UIs have, uh, have had been floated from 10th August to 31st uh, December 2021 uh, for 300 locations. And uh, the publication of UI will be again extended for one more year uh, in due course. This is the uh, business model pr proposed uh, in the UI. So any vendor, uh, who can uh, interested in the uh, enroll in the uh, in the EOI can collect the UCO their self and convert into the biodiesel or in between he can engage a, a UCO aggregator and then aggregator will supply the bio, uh, UCO to the uh, 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 manufacturing units. So uh, there are two modalities for collection and conversion of the biodiesel. So uh, what uh, the status uh, as on date, you can see that uh, total uh, uh, UI received by the Indian oil is around 37 and uh, HPCL around, uh, around 10 and BPCL is around 15. Total 62 UI uh, VPs on industry basis. 
the total capacity is around 953 tons per day and uh, uh, total alloy issued by the indian oil is around 31 and, and on industry basis around 39 ui have been issued uh, so uh, we have uh, start, we have already uh, sorry we have already uh, start uh, uh, received uco biodiesel from three uh, three plants and around 45 uh, kl is already being received, uh, received uh, during last year and this year we have targeted around six plant new plant started supplying uh, uco biodiesel to indian oil so uh, 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 this slide is, is telling something about the tbos so it is estimated that uh, around 11 to 15 lakh tons of non readable uh, tree burn oil seeds can be collected and utilized for biodiesel production there are 11 major, uh, major uh, a TBO producing plants are identified by the National Oil and Seed, uh, National Oil and Oil Palm Board. So uh, uh, currently around 10% uh, 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 potential is har harnessed, but there are potential to uh, collect 5 lakh tons of seeds uh, uh, across India, at, which can be crushed and, to, and, and produced, can be utilized for production of uh, around 1 lakh tons of uh, biodiesel so we are also exploring for engaging rural community for demonstration of community based biodiesel production models in mp chhattisgarh and maharashtra so this is at at very uh, nascent stage because uh, a lot of stakeholders are involved in this initiatives uh, collection of tbo uh, a definite pricing mechanism and and a decentralized value addition uh, value addition centers are required to harness the potential of tree burn oil seeds so uh, we are trying trying to demonstrate one model one model each in mp satyagan and maharashtra so uh, once this model are demonstrated so we can go for a large scale production and collection of tvo from this initiative Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gupta. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So, very nice presentation, Mr. Mr. Gupta, Thank Mr. You. Sachin, and Mr. Mukesh. I believe, Mr. Mukesh, you are there. So, uh, uh, we will start question and answer. Question has started pouring in, and uh, many, many of the participants has. Uh, uh, type their question on uh, Q&A session and also in chat box. Uh, but uh, uh, Mr. Mohan has raised his hand. So if he can speak, uh, we like to listen or he can, uh, uh, I don't know. Now it has gone. Uh, and uh, Mr. Amit Modi, uh, he has also raised his hand. So Mr. Mohan, uh, you can send your uh, question uh, on chat box or, or question answer uh, 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 there and Mr. Modi also you can uh, type your question over there. Uh, achha, okay, so many of the questions <laughs> are typed, uh, and uh, first of all I will take the question from uh, uh, this uh, question and answer as uh, the chat box. So first question is that Honorable Union Road and Transport Minister has announced that with the help of some scientists the government has formula to equalize the calorific value of petrol and ethanol. Hence, the vehicle using petrol and ethanol as fuel will have equal mileage. Any trials being planned by the Indian oil or OMC? Yeah, Mr. Sachin. Sir, the trials are going on at IOC R&D and results are yet to be announced and definitely trials are going on, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, next question is uh, whether CBG is better than CNG. Any test report or trials conducted and reports are available certified by auto OEMs? Uh, uh, I can answer this question. Uh, um, uh, CBG is definitely better than CNG because uh, it's a single mole molecular fuel compared to CNG, which is a multi molecular uh, fuel. And trials have been conducted at Telco Pune, uh, their uh, engine. Uh, uh, manufacturing unit. Uh, I, I have personally visited over there and uh, they have confirmed that CBG has uh, uh, given better performance, but they, 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 uh, uh, since it was their um, uh, 
confidential trials a result has not been on i have seen the results but it has not been in public domain so uh, in public domain uh, the, these uh, trials are not there i have requested them to share their uh, trials report in the public domain uh, which i sure if they, they will uh, certainly do it coming days so definitely cbg is performing uh, better than cng that uh, on the basis of actual performance and report by the end users uh, we we can say that yeah uh, next question is uh, whether feeder stock for biodiesel production is available or any plans have been announced by government to promote it like ethanol blending biodiesel blending is not visible your views please yeah uh, so uh, uh, the available uh, reports are says that uh, we have a potential to produce around 400 crore liter of biodiesel from all uh, all all the sources indigenous sources so there is a need to new uh, to uh, there is a need for program for production uh, for uh, uh, plantation of uh, and cultivation of uh, uh, oil seed crop uh, which is which non edible oil seed crop which can uh, cut our need for uh, around 900 900 crore liter which is required in to, by 2030 okay thank you thank you mr gupta so another question is on one hand biodiesel is sold in 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 spurious market as a replacement to conventional diesel in certain state however it is reported that biodiesel is not available what is the real reason and action taken to stop spurious market sale of biodiesel yeah mr gupta uh, ministry is already directed uh, directed uh, uh, state government and omc to take care the sale of pure diesel okay okay uh, another question is as a customer or vehicles or any furnace or engine is there any difference between natural gas and cbg yeah mr ranjan yes, can answer uh, natural gas and uh, cbg both are containing methane natural gas apart from methane it contains other alkanes also and if we discuss about the price benefits and compare uh, compare the price of cbg with uh, like gasoline petrol so the, the simple thing is price uh, is half or fuel is half good good okay. swach indhan swach uh, fuel or price half okay is there any study done for emission reduction um uh of biofuel cbg ethanol etc considering the transportation of feed stock for long distances fuel to the market and customer the process emission involved in producing and using them do they have lesser emission in the cycle analysis as compared to conventional fuel uh, i think answer is definitely yes yes uh, 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 it, it is a lesser emission and in life cycle it is com uh, compared to conventional fuel it is uh, beneficial uh in reduction of emission as well as uh, cost economy also so answer is definite yes uh another question is uh, apart from india is 2g ethanol produced commercially in other country if so may like to audience please yeah so there is one plant in italy uh, that was uh, established by beta renewable now uh, that has been uh, company has been taken over by versailles but uh, no uh, commercial production data are available on public forum uh, the plant capacity is definitely commercial scale but production data are not available in the public domain and there are some efforts are also made in apangua and uh, icon in uh, canada also but uh, feed stock was uh, uh, maize uh, miscanthus switchgrass <coughs> corn cob etc okay okay and then uh, another question is considering the high cost of 2g and 3g ethanol is it really advantageous to blend it with petrol if petrol prices come down to rupees 65 75 by reduction of crude oil prices or taxes by government ethanol price being rupees 60 average per liter is there any saving 2g and 3g ethanol prices must be further higher than this your thoughts please yeah mr sachi yeah uh, there are two three aspect as i told you there are multiple benefit of biofuel first feed stock domestic there are environmental advantage there are societal advantage we are increasing rural employment opportunity increasing farmer income so considering this add on advantage although it, uh, technology in the nascent is a cost of production is high definitely high but some efforts are being made not, not only on the technology front but also for the process itself 
and like uh, enzyme production by IOC R&D, HPC R&D and then. And uh, we are hopeful in the near future, after this commercial, commercial plants in the country, uh, technology optimization will take place and this pro- cost of production will be also be dropped down drastically. So effort has to be made in the right direction. And uh, we hopeful if we will get this price equally uh, as compared to the first generation okay. ethanol. Good. Uh, another question uh, is, is there any plans of government of India to blend ethanol in diesel? Uh, this, this may result in huge import cost saving in fluid uh, while since diesel consumption is 2.5 to 3 times petrol. Yeah. Gupta sir, uh, I think you have the information. Yes sir, yes, sir. in, in, in 2014-15 uh, BPCL I still try to uh, blend uh, ethanol with the diesel. Uh, but it is also running uh, uh, running successfully, but because of the infrastructure issues, because uh, it is pumped through the uh, pipeline and other uh, uh, carried through the tankers, uh, the study is, is is on hold. There is an issue of, of to use existing in- infrastructure because flush plant is decreases after blending the ethanol. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question is whether hydrogen can be produced from CVG. Is it called green hydrogen as per national hydrogen mission recently announced by government of India? Uh, yeah, answer is I think uh, yes, it can be produced as uh, hydrogen can be produced from CVG and it can be called uh, uh, green hydrogen. Yeah. Uh, another question is can CVG produce from rice straw? If yes, what is the ratio of gas? Yeah, CVG can be. It's a it's a very good source of uh, CVG. Rice straw is very good source and. Uh, recently, we have commissioned a plant uh, uh, based on uh, paddy straw, that is rice straw, and uh, that is a uh, 33 ton of gas is being produced uh, from 330 uh, uh, ton of uh, paddy straw, that is rice straw. So yes, the ratio you can ta- uh, take uh, 10 is to 1. 10 ton uh, paddy straw will produce 1 ton of uh, CPG. Yeah. So with this, uh, um, okay, another question is also there. Uh, from two th- uh, apart from Satat program, Dutch company like Indian Oil is setting up one CBG plant like its refinery. Answer is yes, we are considering and uh, we, we are going to set up a CBG plants. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 Gorakhpur, uh, we are setting up uh, CBG plants uh, and many more are uh, in lined up. So, so, so yes, definitely. Uh, another question. Uh, Biodiesel, uh, there is no much progress on biodiesel compared to ethanol. Uh, okay, so, but definitely uh, comparison is good, but uh, definitely biodiesel is uh, taking shape and uh, it's progressing nicely. It has not stopped. Okay, so 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 we, we should not compare with this product, uh, green biodiesel and ethanol, but yeah, uh, uh, both are progressing nicely. So with this uh, question answer uh, is uh, from the two no, no questions are there in chat uh, box. Few questions, few questions uh, in chat box. Uh, I will speak and uh, uh, request the panelists to answer them. Please let us know what is the output quantity of 2G ethanol from 100 TPD of biomass input. From same quantity input of uh, molasses etc of 100 tpd to 1g plant what is the output and other byproduct please uh, specify the quantity yeah mr Sajid. Yes, yes sir so uh, i just like to give that uh, there are so many feed stocks available for 2g ethanol as well as first generation ethanol so with respect to the 2g ethanol i am taking a for instance uh, paddy straw as the feed stock then uh, one ton of straw Based on the technologies uh, uh, we have uh, adopted, this uh, ethanol quantity be ranging around 220 uh, liters to 280 liters. Our highest deal as of now is uh, coming out uh, from the corn cob. That is around 280 liters. One ton of, if you are using one ton of uh, biomass, as considering, uh, and the byproduct is, uh, as of now, is lignin. If you are using this lignin, as a uh, feed stock for boiler, then we got the uh, <clears throat> this uh, as a byproduct and quantity uh, with respect to 100 ton of biomass processing, it around 18 percent. So uh, uh, it is like one ton of bio uh, paddy straw give you around 220 to 250 to 60 liter of ethanol, and parallelly it will also reduce 180 tons of ash or, or maybe the lignin as a byproduct. 
and some sort of uh, <clears throat> uh, biogas may also be generated and few technology also using this pedestal and having the byproduct as a furfuron and acetic acid that particularly with respect to the campolis technology. Considering the 1G ethanol, there are also uh, three types or four types of feedstock. First, uh, coming from the sugar roots and second from the grain. So I'm just uh, taking an uh, example of grain. If we are using rice as a uh, <coughs> feedstock, then uh, for one ton of rice, we get around 400 to 420 liters of ethanol. And 18% of that will be... Uh, uh, we also get the DDGS, dry distilled grain soluble. It is also a good source, a revenue source for this type of project. And it is a uh, animal feed, poultry as well as the cattle feed. So there are two types of major uh, uh, product and byproduct available. You cannot say that the byproduct is a product itself. So I think uh, I'm making some sense and comparison. And there are so many, better. the data may be... Uh, generated according to them and uh, we would like to give this uh, answer th or to this question in the written also if required okay another question is uh, regarding 20 percent ethanol blending whether uh, any uh, ic engines uh, manufacturer or engine manufacturer automobile manufacturer are uh, ready to accept this uh, 20 percent blending their engines are ready to accept compatible yes sir a uh, lot of discussion has taking place at mopng level and Ministry of Transport level as well as CIA, with CIA. So we are hopeful uh, before this first April 2023, all infrastructure necessary approvals and uh, this uh, <coughs> larger audience, this CIA, will be uh, ready uh, for this E20 roadmap uh, <coughs> initiative. Same uh, type of question, except Rajil, which are the country uh, make a mixing 20% uh, ethanol uh, in the fuel? Sir, flexi fuels are there, but there is no uh, targeted, uh, you know, send the, the <clears throat> mandated uh, target is there for any, uh, except this Brazil for 20%. They are in the range of 2% to 5%, but not in the range of 20%. Okay. And... and uh, Mr. Gupta, the one question regarding biodiesel blending. What is the percentage of biodiesel blending by last year? 21, we are blending 7%, but last year blending is very, very minuscule. It is 0.001%. Okay. okay. Any, any particular region? Because of the COVID and feed stock issue, actually. Okay. Okay. Some okay. Geo geopolitical conditions are different because okay. Okay. We, are, we are depending upon the imported farmer stream from the Malaysia. And there are some issues with the... Okay. So, other question is also regarding biodiesel. Uh, vendors are not supplying the product, including ECO vendors. Can we recover the uh, PRC amount in line with work order? It is. It will uh, decide by the locations. Okay. We are not handling. Okay. Uh, same question. CBG can be produced from rice straw. I already answered. Like HCNG, HCBG uh, is also possible. Been experimented. Oh, very much possible. Uh, but it's very much possible. Uh, then uh, uh, I think uh, we have come to the end. Uh, no more question. And uh, thank you very much, panelists. Uh, thank you, guests. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Parsi, all the participants. Thank you very much. Very nice and encouraging questions. Uh, everybody has got, benefited by your questions. Uh, very active participants. And uh, I think uh, it's a very uh, informative session by everybody, every speaker, and by every participants. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.